got this chance through through camp to kind of evaluate some of the moves you made this offseason, the players you brought in, staff changes you made. How do you feel going into this season about you know kind of taking care of that unfinished business? Do you feel like you had the offseason to put yourself in a spot to you know reach those goals? Yeah, I mean, um, coming out of coming out of preseason, you know, you want to have um, you know some of your your questions answered for sure. You want to have them all answered. Uh, you make assumptions, you know, based on what you see in preseason, and then once you get into the season, you um, you figure out what those things are, and um, the ones that are accurate, you keep enhancing. The ones you don't, you just um, you know you got to address, and and I think that's you know what we got to get done here as we, as we head into the first couple games of the season. I think um, we had an opportunity to build some depth at certain positions, which is important. As um, you said, you know, what, what is the season going to look like? You know, that was one area that we knew we had to we had to build in the off season. We felt like we did that in terms of you know the talent acquisition and the roster, but you, know, you also have to go on the field now, put it on the field, and um, you know work on the techniques and the fundamentals that you know we have to go put on the field, learn the scheme in all three phases, uh, which started you know back in the spring, but you know. You know, we'll, we'll find out here once we get going, but uh, yet to be seen. But you know, I, I feel like in this preseason, there's there's been an edge to our team. I feel like we've been um, consistent. I think it's, it's been back and forth, offense and defense, which is usually you know a good sign. Uh, so we'll you know keep grinding on this thing. We got a um, you know muck game going on on Saturday in the, in the stadium, uh, and then you know come up for air on Sunday and start uh, game planning for Akron. Austin Ward. Ryan, it felt like maybe a week ago that Tegra was close to earning a starting nod. Has that solidified, do you think, this week for the, the group on the offensive line? Or is that going to carry over the next week? Yeah, I, I think he's definitely going to play at guard. Um, you know, whether he starts, we'll probably decide here coming off of Saturday. But uh, he's definitely going to play unless, you know, something uh, you know, drastic were to happen. I think he's earned that opportunity. Um, you know, how much and if it's the whole whole game. And, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll decide that as we get probably through the weekend, but uh, for sure he's, he's earned the right to play in, in this game. And um, you know, again, we'll, we'll wait a couple more days to decide who the starter's going to be. That position feels so much different than the quarterback. Where maybe you could right. rotate throughout. And, and do you feel better about the overall playable depth in that spot? Yeah, I do. Um, and, and a lot of it had to do with, um, you know, because we had to put guys into some starting roles. And it, it's, it's all positions, but Certainly in the offensive line, when when you're taking reps with the twos and threes and all of a sudden you get pushed up with the ones, you better tighten up fast and you, you get an idea of how guys can hold up, especially when, when you're blocking our defensive line every day. So uh, I think that was that was something that was definitely addressed here, uh, you know, this preseason. I think Austin Saravel stepped up in a big way, you know, with, with Donnie being out. Um, and and then, you know, you know Carson can, can play both guard and center, which is good. Um, and, you know, we've actually, you know, Zen has done a nice job as well. Um, but it, it was good to see Austin, you know, he moved from guard to tackle a couple times. And even with the ones, he was in there battling his tail off. So um, I, I think we have built some depth there. But, again, you know, we got to go play some games and see where we're at. Rob Aller. Brian, what's the main thing you want to see out of the old line that maybe you didn't see last year? Yeah, I, you know, again, whether it's whatever happened last year is last year. But I, I know that the, the message to our – to our offensive line is we want to play, we want to be the hardest playing offensive line in the country. Now we got to play with technique, but at the end of the play, like knock the line of scrimmage back and play with your hair on fire as hard as you possibly can. There's a lot that goes with you playing in the offensive line. There's a lot of communication. There's a lot of things that have to get into place. I think Seth has done a nice job of communicating. He understands the offense better now. He takes control up front and brings everybody together, uh, which is great. But, but to me, like that's it. Now we could list a bunch of other things, but to me, We've got to move the line of scrimmage. We've got to be just playing with our hair on fire and knocking people back and playing physical. Um, and that's to start the game. That's to end the game. This is a destination spot for wide receiver, for quarterback, for DBs, maybe not for O-line. Do you see that differently? And how do you how do you get over that? Loss, I guess? No, no, I don't see it that way at all. I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what we got this year. But I, I feel like, you know, we've got some really good young players in the system. I think that... Um, you know, we should have the best offensive line in the country. That's that's the standard here. Uh, it has been for a long time, and um, you know, and, and so you know, we'll keep pushing towards that this year. And um, you know, I think you know everybody in that room will tell you the same thing. Uh, Tony Gerdman. Ryan, uh, how's the situation at real linebacker shaping up right now? How do you foresee that going uh, next week? Yep. So uh, Sonny has really stepped up 
uh, and, and played well. He's made this transition from safety to linebacker uh, very well. I think he did a nice job in the spring, but you could definitely see as he went into the, the summer, just you know, bigger, stronger, uh, being more comfortable closer to the line of scrimmage. It's different when you're, when you're closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's doing a better job getting his you know, hands on, on um, you know, on offensive linemen and getting off of blocks, you know, using a better job, doing a better job with his hands. I think he understands the communication. You know, the, the linebackers always have to be involved with the front. They got to be involved and fit into the back end. He's doing that. Um, you know, I think he's he's you know looking forward to play, uh, playing in a game and you know getting an idea of what it all looks like. But I can tell you in practice, he's playing fast. He's playing violent, and I think he's you know he he, he does a nice job of taking the meeting to the field, being very intentional about his work, but playing really hard. Is, is, is he the number one right Yeah, I, I haven't talked to Jim because, you know, we'll, we'll make that final decision here over the weekend, but uh, he's certainly the leader in the clubhouse. Jimmy. Can you tell Ryan, I mean, Seth McLaughlin, can you tell he's been there, done that? Has he, has he projected that uh, to the offensive line? You're still on the from a leadership standpoint, a grown man. Yes. How does that just come about? How does that show up? Uh, a bunch of ways. It's just poise. It's not getting rattled when you know coach barks at you. It's saying, okay, I got this. Let me get it under control. It's seeing something in practice and, and being able to adjust on the move. It's uh, being prepared when you walk on the field. Uh, it's recognizing how hard you have to play at the position. It's um, you know kind of all of those things into one. But uh, he's got great communication up front. He talks to the guys. Um, he's moving quickly in there. And when you have experience like he has, you know the game seems to slow down at times. Yet, um, you know he seems to be playing it at, at a fast level. Uh, Spencer Holbrook, Ryan, you've seen a lot of true freshmen go to the You see that in Milan. You see him in the last couple of weeks take a step where he may force himself off into that rotation. Yeah, there was a point where uh, he got a black stripe off, and I feel like he took a step in the right direction. When you come in in the summer, it, it is very difficult to get on the field, especially early in the season. Um, whether he does or not, uh, we'll see. Uh, but if he continues to practice the way that he's been practicing, then he'll give himself a chance to be in the rotation midway through the season um, or later in the season, which is similar to some of the wide receivers we've had before. You know, you've seen some of those guys get some reps early in the season, but then make an impact later in the season. I think that's probably more uh, his path right now. now you know, he shows up and starts doing great, then, you know, we'll, you know, we'll give him the reps he deserves. Um, where, like, Jeremiah is in a different situation because you know, he came in here in January and he was a little bit ahead. Anybody who comes in in January, to me, I don't look at them as a freshman anymore. They've been here, they're in the program, and we expect them to contribute. Steven Means, you've been living in it for a while now, but you've had two scrimmages, you have to use the Lamar game on Saturday as well. Now that you're not on the plane, like, how do you how do you see yourself spending your time during those scrimmages and maybe are you picking up on things that maybe you weren't noticing before just about your team because you're not head deep into a play sheet as much as you are? Um, I'm still in there, um, right there, uh, talking and, and communicating, but um, in the scrimmages we've had, it's you know it's, it's been offense versus defense. So I've mostly been on the offensive side, still kind of going through all those types of things. And there's a lot to work through this year, just with you know the play clock and then. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, the close to player communication inside of 15 goes off. Just there's a lot of things that go go on there, and you know, we don't really get notification on that. So I, I'm trying to, you know, just help chip with that and some some communication that way, personnel. Um, but I'm going to be very much involved with special teams. I think with the two minute warning, there's some strategic things that are going to go on again to happen in the game that you know you got to really be involved with. Um, but to your point, just overall, just looking guys in the eye, making sure that. You know, uh, they got the right look in their eye. You know that you know they, they understand. Um, you know, with the situation, what's going on in the game. You know, I think that happens sometimes with young players. You know, they just like playing the next play. You know, and, and that's not just how that's not how it works. We've got to win the situations, and so you know all those things are coming to play and, and making in-game adjustments. Um, you know, being involved with on all three phases. You know, watching you know the game on a tablet to try to identify what happened in the last series. I think all, all those things will be happening. Dan Hope. Ryan, have you guys made a decision on who the starting punter will be yet? Right now, uh, Nick is going to be the starter. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, that, that competition will go into next week. But um, right now, as we head into the weekend, uh, he is the starter. 
Um, and the plan is for him to be the, the, the first punter to go up in the game uh, on Saturday against Akron. What has he shown you to earn that job? Yeah, he's got a strong leg. He's, he's made it um, a good transition into um, you know, the country, but also just playing you know football um, and not Australian rules football, which is very, very different. Um, the um, you know snap to kick has really improved. You know, that was one thing. He has, he's a taller guy. So the ball has to get out of his, you know, get off his foot faster. I think he's done that. Um, his hang time has been good, uh, and he's been more consistent. Um, you'll see, you know, he'll, he'll kick a few that'll just go right out of the stadium. You know, he just got a strong, strong leg. So we're looking for that consistency. He's, he's shown that here most recently. So uh, he's got the upper hand right now. And last question, Jeremy Birmingham. I see, um, you know, a bunch of traits there. I think the first trait is size. You know, he's big. He, he can stand in the pocket, and he, he's strong. Um, so, I mean, that, that's the first thing you notice about him. Again, whether it's standing in the pocket with poise, I think that's another trait that he has that's excellent. He, he feels the rush. Um, but he stands right in there. I think uh, the next trade is just, you know, his, his top end speed. I mean, he can run 22 miles an hour at that size, which uh, there's not a lot of guys who can do that. You know, so I think that's an extraordinary trade. And I would, I would say his overall leadership command in the huddle is, is another, you know, something that he's, he's really, you know, grown into in the last few months when he's been here. Uh, and then his accuracy. You know, he's been very accurate since he's been here. Um, and when he knows what's going on and he can anticipate what's happening, I mean, it, it looks right. You just feel it. And and he can hurt you, you know, a bunch of different ways. So, um, you know, his ceiling, you know, that, that's that's going to be kind of, you know, up to how he plays this season. But, um, you know, I, I see a player who has a lot of great uh, skills that, you know, translates well to, to the next level. So, you know, we'll see. But uh, I know his first focus is on winning games around here. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Yeah, exactly.